Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, 2021 FAA UAS Symposium dates announced, Starship SN15 launches and lands, and WISC to supply as many as 30 eVTOL aircraft for Blade UAM program. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Hi, I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. The FAA and AUVSI will co-host episodes three and four of the virtual FAA Unmanned Aircraft Systems Symposium, Remotely Piloted Edition. The theme for this year's virtual event is Above and Beyond, and will take place on June 9th and 10th and September 14th and 15th. Experts from Industry Academia International Aviation Authorities and the U.S. government will discuss key areas for the future of the drone community, including operations over people, rule, remote identification, aerospace authorizations, waivers, and Part 107 small UAS rule, changes in hobbyist drone operations, and other policies and regulations. Last year, the symposium went virtual with a two-part event. Drones Here for Good, Episodes 1 and 2 focused on UAS Traffic Management, Global Harmonization, the UAS Integration Pilot Program, and Public Safety Operations. This year's Episode 3, scheduled for June 9th and 10th, will concentrate on international operations, STEM, public safety operations, recreational drone operations, and commercial drone operations. Episode 4 is scheduled for September 14th and 15th, with a focus on UAS Traffic Management, Technology, the Beyond Program, Advanced air mobility, and international operations. Each episode will feature keynote presentation, expert channels, guided and non-guided network discussions, one-on-one -on -one meetings with experts in the FAA UAS Support Center, and informational sessions with live Q&A. More news after the break. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working and you're going to hear more about it. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Altitude Angel tells ANN that former Gatwick Airport UAS drone lead Ashley Harvey will take up the new position of regulation, airspace, and airport specialist. With nearly 25 years professional experience working in aviation, predominantly at the UK's busiest single runway operation, Gatwick Airport, Harvey held several roles including air side control lead and airfield duty manager before his appointment as UAS lead in 2019. AMA has reported that it recently met with the OMB to discuss the importance of Advisory Circular 91-57C and its release. Although it was expected to be released sometime in late 2020, the AC has been delayed at the OMB because of President Biden's regulatory freeze. The AC contains the safety requirements that recreational users are to follow, details a process for community-based organization recognition, information regarding the knowledge and safety test, and operating requirements for night flying in controlled airspace. 
Members of two CAP South Dakota Wing Squadrons trained last month in Rapid City using search drones. Our exercise simulated a lost teenager who was hiking to a lake near a residential area on the edge of Rapid City, said Colonel Mike Beeson, exercise commander. The search terrain was a challenge since there was a 150-foot drop from the start of the trail to the lake. The ground team's SUAS technicians followed the craft's path, tracking it and coordinating with the pilots by CAP radio. AMA and UAS Sidekick announced a new partnership to disseminate free recreational low-altitude authorization and notification capability flight planning to nearly 175,000 UAS hobbyists who are members of AMA. The software allows pilots to file LAANC authorizations with the FAA when flying in control airspace via a web portal and mobile application. It includes additional flight planning tools such as interactive maps, weather information, and flight logs. That was our Unmanned Minute, now back to the rest of the news. With hundreds of thousands logging in all over the globe to watch, the much-upgraded Starship SN15 aced a test flight that had destroyed four prototypes before it. On Wednesday, May 5th, Starship serial number SN15 successfully completed SpaceX's fifth high-altitude flights test of the Starship prototype from Starbase in Texas. Similar to a previous high-altitude flight test of Starship, SN-15 was powered through ascent by three Raptor engines, each shutting down in sequence prior to the vehicle reaching FOG, approximately 10 kilometers in altitude. SN-15 performed a propellant transition to the internal header tanks, which hold landing propellant before reorientating itself for re-entry and a controlled aerodynamic descent. The Starship prototype descended under active aerodynamic control, accomplished by independent movement two forward and two aft flaps on the vehicle. All four flaps were actuated by an onboard flight computer to control Starship's altitude during flight and enable precise landing at the intended location. SN-15's Raptor engines reignited as the vehicle performed the landing flip maneuver immediately before touching down for a nominal landing on the pad. Musk is now quoted as suggesting that SN-15 may yet fly again. Our last top story of this episode coming up after these messages. In Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical, with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. Welcome back. This is our last top story of the show. Blade Urban Air Mobility and Whisk Arrow have entered into an agreement for Whisk to provide Blade with up to 30 electric vertical aircraft. Following FAA certification, Blade and Whisk intend to deploy the aircraft on short distance routes between Blade's network of dedicated terminals throughout the U.S., with Whisk aircraft being chartered by Blade at an hourly rate on those routes. Whisk will be compensated based on Blade flight time utilized on the aircraft which will be owned, operated, and maintained by WISC for Blade's use. Blade expects to leverage its existing flight volumes to provide minimum flight hour guarantees to WISC. WISC's deployment of the aircraft on Blade routes is subject to the parties entering into definite agreements.
Blade and Whisk will also form a working group to assist in the deployment of technologies necessary for aircraft charging and next-generation air traffic management. The working group will also leverage Blade's six years of experience with UAM services in the most congested markets to inform future Whisk design principles. Whisk currently operates autonomous eVTOL aircraft pursuant to experimental type certificates and plans to begin initial test flights in Blade's key service areas when possible. Well, that does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Make sure to follow our YouTube channel and you can also catch episodes of Airborne on Roku on Fire TV too. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next time.